I am the founder of an art tour organization in London called Art Tours with a theme, Art Wit. And since the pandemic has started, I'm offering um, virtual tours, blogs, vlogs, and the new initiative called Art Cafe. As you can see, it's online art and architecture conversation offered twice a month on Mondays at 8 p.m. GMT, London time. It's free and you can book your uh, place at eventbrite.co.uk. It's 30 minutes, 20 minutes presentation by myself where I share my screen and then 10 minutes chat and Q&A. Now, some of you may not have the time to attend the Zoom call, and so I decided to record the presentation so you can catch up with topics that you may be interested in. This is not an art history class. It's for me sharing my passion, artworks I feel interested about, passionate about, and I hope this offers you some food for thought. So you can see below all the dates. We have already done Christmas in three and a half paintings on the 21st of December. And on the 4th of January, food in contemporary art. And so today is about this latter topic. In the future, I'm going to offer talks about phenomenal black women artists on the 18th of January, brutalist architecture in London, the 1st of February, Phenomenal Black Women Artists, um, 15th of February, and Skyscrapers Architecture in London, the 1st of March. So this is for the first um, trimester of the year. Um, enjoy, sit back, grab a coffee, and um, let me know if you have any other topic you'd be interested in. So this um, presentation is about 20 minutes. There's an introduction where I also introduce some artworks and I give you themes for discussion. So in the Zoom call, the audience can write comments in the chat area and those comments are then discussed at the end, uh, the last 10 minutes, which is not happening here today. So let's give you an introduction, food and art, a long love affair, for example, Let's look at this ancient Greek vase where food is displayed. Um, two boys having dinner, maybe. And so food here was used to display scenes of everyday life. And then this was the case for a lot of time until a masterpiece was made by Leonardo in the last 10 years of 1400, The Last Supper. Now, this is a fresco in Actempera in Milan, and here food has a deep religious meaning where bread represents the body of Christ and wine his blood. Uh, this is not the time and place to talk about this masterpiece, but this is an example on how much food was embedded in, in heart um, 500 years ago. And this love affair went on. Um, then we have 100 years later, Archimboldo in a, an art movement that today we call mannerism, where the artist um, is keen to impress the audience, to create the wonderful, the unheard of, the unseen, the extraordinary. And this portrait made by fruit and vegetables can also be hung upside down for a completely different message. Now let's move on. In 1600, the second part of 1600, you get the gold um, age of Dutch painting, where this is an example of still lives. There were many at that time painted in the Netherlands. The idea is to show a wealthy table for a feast, which represents wealth for the wealthy merchants uh, at that time in Holland. But look at this construction is uh, at the verge of falling down and each piece of fruit, vegetable and even meat and a lobster have a, a represent a symbol, is a symbol for something else. For example, the lobster represents Jesus Christ. 
So the overall feast is nothing less than a memento mori, which in Latin means remember you have to die. So you're rich, but you will not be able to bring all your wealth in your tomb. So this is in a sense religious as well as it was the last supper, but for different purposes. So these are just four examples of the long-standing love affair between art and food. Now forget paintings and everything you have seen so far and forget the old masters because when contemporary art comes in, the relationship between food and art is taken to another level. But what is contemporary art? There are a lot of interpretations, but this sort of definition maybe caters for all uh, needs and all art historians would be happy to use this. So it's a diverse, so it's a sort of umbrella and movement that embraces a diverse range of styles emerged after the Second World War, who had um, just one thing in common, they rejected painting as the main form of art. And so contemporary art was made of films, installations, performances, interaction with the public. Um, and moreover, it was an experience that the public needed to have. Another thing uh, all those artists had in common is that their, um, what mattered was the concept, the idea behind the artwork. The artwork itself could have short life and also can be replicable, not unique. We are going to see now three artworks where food is building material, not oil paint, not watercolor, not egg tempera, but food uh, as the medium to create the artwork, which is intentionally perishable and replicable. The first artwork I want to cover is made by cooked couscous. The artist is Kader Atia, a French artist with Algerian origins. And the title is ironically untitled, Gardaya, made in 2009, a part of the permanent collection of Tate Modern here uh, in London. I, I would like for you to go and visit Tate Modern as soon as it is open again to experience this um, very interesting artwork. Um, so this is part of the artwork I'm going to explain. So you uh, approach this table, which is not the artwork itself, it's a plinth. And this installation, the sculpture represents an ancient city in Algeria called the Gardaya. Now, why couscous is the building material? Because couscous is the staple food of Northern Africa. It's now widely spread. We, we have it in Europe as well, in other parts of the world. But this really identifies Northern Africa and Algeria. And you see it has some cracks because it's an ancient city which is falling apart. The city is made by similar residential buildings um, built in on a hill around a main tower, which is a point of reference, with some mosques here and there. Then when you walk around, you approach the wall, there's the gallery label, label that then describes that the artwork is also made by these three uh, A4 prints, uh, which were the ones we've seen before. A bilingual, it's a replica or bilingual document with all the reasons why Gardaya should in 1982 um, should have been uh, included in the UNESCO heritage. And the last point, the, the last reason is that this city in, was an inspiration for modernist architects such as Le Corbusier represented in this paper and Pouillon, uh, 30 years younger than Le Corbusier architects, uh, who designed a number of um, condominiums in uh, France where the artist lived when he was a child. Now Le Corbusier passed away in the 60s and Pouillon in the, um, in the 80s. But they are like the fathers of modernist architecture in France and in Algeria. This is the artist, Kader Atia, born in 1970, 
Um, so he's, uh, he's 50 at the moment and he was born in France from uh, Algerian parents. And for him living in France meant living in one of those modernist condominiums at the outskirts of Paris called Le Banlieue, where security is not the best. So for those French um, citizens who are actually not 100% French, apparently, life is much harder than somebody who has was born in France, but from French um, citizens. So there's a sort of criticism. There's some controversy going on here. And it's all about, this is Gardaya, which is here in Algeria. It's all about the discourse around colonialism because Algeria was a colony of France and post-colonialism. What happened to Algeria once colonialism ended at the end of 1920s? So France committed to help Algeria to modernize and sent, asked basically Le Corbusier to go to Algeria and uh, study the architecture in order to make something modern but inspired from the past. So the accusation that Kaderatia makes towards France, towards UNESCO and towards the architects, French architects, is that they all nurtured themselves with the um, Algerian culture and also here in this case architecture, but in general with the culture from Algeria, moved on with their projects, but didn't recognize um, Algeria as being so inspirational. So everybody forgot about Algeria. Nobody is spending money in helping Algeria to thrive and everything is falling apart. So couscous in this case represents the national and the cultural identity of the artist and of this post-colonialist discourse. This is an example of modernist architecture by Cuyon in France. And this is another artwork by Caderatia in the same years where it's also made by couscous, but in this case, the houses are completely absent. The message is very strong is saying um, this architecture is vanishing, the culture is vanishing because nobody is caring about it anymore. Now question for you, food for thought, if you were in this Zoom call, which food can identify your national and cultural identity? So in our uh, Zoom call at the end of this presentation, I read all the answers and I gave my views and then we talked, it was quite fun. So for example, I'm from Milan, Northern Italy and the food that could perhaps represent Milan is saffron risotto. So if I could politically um, engage with the previous um, lordships of Milan, let's say Spain, France and Austria over time, I would uh, perhaps sculpture Milan in saffron risotto. So what about you? The second artwork is made by Fruit and Vegetables by Urs Fischer, this artist who was born in uh, the early 70s. Um, it's called the Fall Fundament, so fake uh, foundation in 1998. It's owned by Gagosian Gallery, Commercial Gallery, one of the top 10 in the world. So what could this possibly represent? Um, so Urs Fischer is famous for opposing a very stable material, in this case, brickwork, with perishable material, in this case, food. And he uses food and vegetables a lot. This is a simplified version of the Berlin Wall. And Urs Fischer takes fun, makes fun, mocks history. We make um, a lot of studies about the Cold War, East and West of Germany, Berlin Wall. But at the end of the day, everything will collapse as this wall is going to collapse as soon as this fruit and vegetable will perish. This is what the foundations of this wall. So it looks very solid, but at the end of the day, it is not. So our convictions, our heritage, our history is not as solid as we think. And uh, now fruit and vegetable is something very humble. History is very heroic. Usually we have monuments with the generals 
um, and we have celebration of history, but there's nothing heroic in fruit and vegetables nor in history based on Urs Fischer's views. Everything is made of nothing, everything will collapse. It's something ironic, but something nihilistic at the same time. Now, uh, you can perhaps link this fake foundation to the painting we have seen before, Still Life with Ham, Lobster and Fruit, the Dutch uh, painting of 1600, where there's this sort of decaying of the fruit and vegetable suggests life is short and we will all die. So perhaps even this artwork is a memento mori. But another interpretation, because Hulse Fischer at the end of the day is very ironic, it looks like he's taking fun of something else. It's a religious set, is an esoteric set in the 1600, who thought there was a parallel universe to ours where planets were made of fruit. <laughs> Believe it or not. So Fisher makes fun, takes fun of the proper history, but also of this esoteric set. Something else um, Urs Fischer is having fun with is this installation called a Speedy Smoky Piggy Charlie Mungo in an art gallery. And you can see fruit is hanging from the ceiling and it's gradually deteriorating, going rotten. So instead of having something very precious, something very expensive, something very glittery, you have something that deteriorates and it's very smelly. Perhaps he's taking fun of the art market here. And now one of the most interesting artwork by Urs Fischer is called Untitled in 2003, where a humble banana is illuminated by a projector and its uh, shadow is clearly visible on the wall. Now the humble banana becomes in this way, a star, a diva, a prima donna. And if you think what happened at one of the most prestigious art fairs last year, where the Italian artist Catalan took a banana attached on a wall with a sticky tape. Um, then you may think that there was nothing new. It was not innovative. It was provocative, but not innovative because Urs Fischer celebrated a banana 20 years before. Catalan cashed in and made it commercially successful. So again, perhaps this is fun. Um, this is making fun of the art market. Uh, one of the most interesting pieces, again, is this sort of toilet with fruit and vegetables coming out of it or perhaps going down. Do you know who's taking fun of? Well, it's Duchamp with his urinal. Again, what does art history mean? So one artist was provocative and like wanted to engage with the art market in 1914. But then at the end of the day, we are all throwing down the toilet. Um, at the end of the day, even artists are ridiculous um, in Urs Fischer's interpretations. And here, the last artwork I want to share is called Francesco, 2017. Perhaps this is himself, who's Fischer himself, or perhaps it's us, the common man, the common person. So you get the sculpture of a common person made in wax. The wax will uh, burn and collapse, standing on his refrigerator. And again, here you see fruit and vegetable because it's open, it will go rotten. So again, it's the celebration of the everyday, taking fun of it, how many times we forgot our fruit and vegetables in the refrigerator and we had to throw it away. It's fun, it's sad, it's nihilistic, I think. So which fruit of veg would you choose as foundations for your house? I like berries. I would build the foundation of my house in strawberries, blackberries. And so my house will never be built because I will eat my foundations each day. So which fruit or vegetable is the foundation for your house? The last artwork is made by cookies and cakes by a Chinese artist called Song Dong. 
who was born in 1966. This particular installation is called Eating the City and was installed at Pace Gallery in London in 2019. This is the, um, how it looked like. It took 10 volunteers from Goldsmith University, which is a university for artists, to help building this installation. And it, made, it is made of 30,000 pieces of cakes and cookies. Now, wherever the artist goes and is invited, um, the, this eating the city artwork changes, is inspired by different architecture, and it makes use of local cookies and cakes that are widely available in local supermarkets, but something local. And also this city does not represent any city, is inspired by Beijing, and by New York, by Dubai, by any modern city. So the installation goes on for about a week and then the audience at the end is invited to eat it. Let me show you a detail of one of those installations. I love this, the stadium with this pretty green belt going around. It's a pretty cars made by jelly. And this is what happens. This is New York. So the, the artist said he's fascinated to see the reaction of the public. At the beginning, when they say green light, you can eat it, everybody is very shy. But then what happens is that as time goes by, people uh, gain confidence and become very aggressive and try to eat as much as possible. So the problem is how people cooperate in those environments. So Song Dong seems, say, um, seems to say that in big cities, we've become very individualistic we forgot the sense of brotherhood and helping each other. And what he has in mind is Beijing and how Beijing has become. To make space for those big skyscrapers, um, the city has eradicated the hutong, the traditional um, residential building, which have, is the really the backbone of Chinese civilization. And about 600 hutongs are destroyed each year to make space uh, for uh, skyscrapers. So this is a clash of old and new. People um, pushed away from hutongs are given new accommodations in apartments, losing the sense of the self, the sense of identity, of cultural belonging. And where are we heading to by destroying our past? So the artist is very, uh, polemical is very controversial with the cultural revolution that started with Mao Zedong and the idea of becoming modern at all costs. Now, which building would you eat first if you were invited by Song Dong um, exhibition? Perhaps I would start from the underground because something I don't like taking at all. What about you? So to sum up, we have seen Kaderatia and Couscous, which food can identify your national cultural identity. We have seen uh, Urs Fischer with fake foundations. And the question for you is, which fruit and veg uh, would you use for the foundations of your house? And finally, some dong with these uh, cookies, which building would you eat first? Which building you don't like in your city? So this is the end of the presentation. Thank you very much. I really hope to see you at the next Art Cafe on Zoom. Um, if you miss it, check out the presentation on YouTube. My contacts email artwithlondon at gmail.com, Instagram artwith underscore London, my Facebook artwithlondon, Instagram and Facebook have the same blogs. And then on eventbrite.co.uk, look for art tours with a theme. Same thing for youtube.com. Thank you for listening and uh, keep following me. Take care and stay safe. Bye-bye.